Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, brothers, sisters, friends, enemies, and frenemies. Today we're going to be taking another look at Jesse Lee Peterson and how he uses confusion, gaslighting, manipulation to confuse one of his callers who's actually trying to lead Jesse to the truth. Again, this video is protected under the Copyright Act of 1976 for the purposes of fair use, criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, and scholarship and research. So we are going to review this uh, experience between Jesse Lee Peterson and one of his callers. And um, we're going to dissect the, the, the lack of biblical familiarity in the caller. The caller had good intentions. He had certain amount of right doctrine. But let's watch how Jesse Lee Peterson, and I'll bring scriptures up at the end of this video. So if you happen to see some scriptures that this man could have went to before the end, go ahead and drop them in the comments section as this video is premiering or underneath the comment section. Scriptures this man could have used to defend his position and his uh, defense of scripture. Uh, drop it. I'll cover it at the end. So drop it before you hear my biblical scriptures I bring up. 888-775-3773. That's a line open. Let me go to Don out of Texas. Don. What hey, for, for attempting <laughs> for attempting to reach. Oh, let me go back here. For attempting to reach Jesse, Don out of Texas. You get, you get a round of applause, and where's where's the uh, DJ horn? DJ <laughs> messing up my sound effects here. Let's start it again. Seven seven three. That's a line open. Let me go to Don out of Texas. Don, welcome to the show. Yeah. You're on the air. Hey, good. Uh, second time caller, but so I see you with a Bible on your other show. For your church show, right? So you don't, you've never read it. You just carry it. No, I read the Bible sometimes. Very astute observations. He just carries a Bible around, and he doesn't teach from the Bible. And we're going to find out really why really soon. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> okay. You do such good work, brother. I mean it. And I'm, I'm saying, brother, I, I don't. Okay, we really have to get past the fact that if someone is doing good things, they're doing good work or they're doing kingdom work. What profit a man if he gaineth the whole world and yet forfeits his soul? It doesn't matter how many people you feed, you clothe. It doesn't matter um, amount of good works you do. If you have not given them the gospel that leads to eternal life and the salvation of their souls, and you claim to be a pastor, you are not doing a good work. You are doing a wicked, evil, and deceptive work. You can't define Jesse's ministry or any of the works he's done as good works because he denies Jesus Christ. He denies the gospel. Well, if I should or not, go. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, he said he is the only way. He is the way and the truth. No one comes to the Father except through him. And for yourself, you you have a spirit, soul, and body. So does God. And he tells us that in his word. The Bible is God's word. There's no contradictions in the Bible. There's nothing but truths. In the Bible, I should be on your Bible thumper day. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, brother, you need to get much more better prepared when you're uh, facing off against such a person rooted and grounded in the doctrines of devils. You're <laughs> he wouldn't let me come on. He would hang up on me. He would control the conversation. He would ask his same idiotic questions to keep me from bringing up act the actual powerful arguments that contradict his nonsense and his foolery. But um, you actually don't need to talk to a serpent. I have a thing I call Garden Theology 101. Don't talk to snakes. Nothing productive can come from a conversation with a serpent. You rebuke it. You bring properly divided word of truth against it. And you keep on walking. Do not give 
uh, dogs what is holy and do not throw your pearls before pigs. Jesus said that. Amen. Uh, but, but, do but, you believe? But I've been listening. Go do ahead. do you believe in Jesus? Yeah, well. So that'll be most of this argument that he tells the man not to believe in Jesus. I believe, uh, yeah, Jesus was there from the beginning. Do you believe yes. in Jesus? Yes. You believe in Jesus? That's the only way to the Father. Yes. No, but he do, says, you, do you believe in him? I don't guess I'm understanding that question. Um, I, no, nobody really would, because it's, um, it's, it is what's commonly referred to as narcissistic word salad. When you dice up words and try to make try to make a, a you know you swallow a camel but strain out a gnat. Let's keep watching. Yes. You did say yes, you I believe do. in Jesus, right? Yes. Yes. And, I do. and why do you believe in Jesus? Well, because okay, let's back up to the Bible. Um that's a that's been a uh sir, don't back up to the Bible. You never should have came out of the Bible. You never should have came out of the Bible. Although having a biblical discussion with Jesse Lee Peterson is pointless because he doesn't regard scripture as authoritative. Number one seller in book for over a thousand years. <laughs> okay, so he's using, rather than just simply using the word of God, uh, Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing a soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. He appeals to the social proof of the, the number one bestseller of all times in books is the Bible. The social proof doesn't validate the Bible. The spirit of truth validates the Bible for believers, okay? It, you don't need to appeal to how the world has responded to the Bible. That's not authoritative. The word of God is authoritative. Hey, so it's not something that was just, you know, put together. How do you carry something for a thousand years? You know, and it just come together. The reason why that's horrible is because uh, Islam has been around for more than a thousand years. So it, you could use the same thing to validate, you know, a, f a false religion as you can to to validate the one true religion, okay. That is the spoken word of God. So I believe in Jesus because He said the only way to the Father is through me. He said, "If you seen me, you seen the Father." And why do you believe in Jesus? Again, Jesse doesn't know the gospel. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't respect the power of the gospel, as as Paul said, Romans one eighteen or sixteen, one of those two verses. I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. He should have believed the gospel. I don't know what his answer is. Let's see what his answer is. Because I believe in the Bible. I believe the Bible. He believes in the Bible. Okay. He should have said, I believe the gospel. I believe the message about what Christ's finished work was. Okay, keep keep gospel focused. Keep keep gospel centric with one of these apostate devils. This is a spoken word of God. But did Jesus tell you to believe in him? Here we go again with that. Well, I don't Yeah. He said the only way to the Father is through me. But did he tell you to believe in him? Isn't that what he just said? Or, or did the Bible say have faith in God? Okay. So should we have faith in God? Yes. Amen. Should we have faith in Jesus? Yes. And amen. The, see, the two are inextricably linked together. That's the, that's the promise of the new covenant. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. The Father is in me and I am in the Father. So what we are to do to the Father or towards the Father is the same as what we are to do towards the Son. There, <laughs> we baptize, and this is, uh, God doesn't put anyone 
equal to himself, but yet we're told to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is another ex biblical example of how they're given equality, equality and trinity. He, he, let's go on. Yes, it does say have faith in God. Does it ever say have faith in Jesus? No. So why not. have you chosen to? So the gentleman who says um, it says to have faith in God says it never says to have faith in Jesus. So if you know the scriptures that contradict this, I encourage you drop this and drop them in the comments uh, on the on the premiere or down in the comments section so I can see how many people drop a comment that differs from I, you only need how many I, I'm going to bring up two scriptures, which which show otherwise. But let's do a test on you before you hear from me. Believe in Jesus, but not God. Well, yeah, I don't. If you don't believe the words of the Son, you're not. You don't have faith in God. Jesus said that the words I speak to you are not my own; they are the Father's. So they are inextricably bound together. Believing the Word of God is believing the Son, believing the Father. See it that way. Uh, the reason I choose to believe Jesus, not believe in Him. But uh, believe his word. He's and he's got him compromised already, y'all. I mean, it, it happens so quick. This power of deception, this power of manipulation, and if you don't have the right preparation, this man knows what the he knows instinctively what to say to to rip people apart. You know, when he was tempted, somebody said something about him being tempted earlier. And everything he said when he was talking to Satan was, it is written. But why have you chosen yeah. to believe in Jesus? Okay, he's trying to argue several different things here. So he's trying to stand up for the authority of the Bible and the scriptures. And he's also got this argument in here about believing in Jesus. So I forget what it's called, but Jesse just dragged him off the argument. Uh, he came on to debate him on the authority of scripture and Jesse brought in a separate argument than what he was making, believing in Jesus. Jesse, of course, and this also is wrong, but this man is not prepared. When the Bible says to believe in God, well, only I believe, only in, believe God. in God. I believe in God, but the, the way I get to God is through Jesus Christ. And how, how is that? Because that's what he said. But how do you get to God through Jesus? It is what he said. You're right. It's, but it's, how, does, it's how do you do he, that? It's through what he done it's for through, me as a sinner. As, as a fallen state in this world, Christ paid for everything. And through him, through his name, I get to go to the Father. Since he was on the cross, I can boldly go to the throne. Before, when he was on earth, he was the father. Oh. Oh, dude. What? <sighs> Bro, what are you talking about, man? And I applaud your intentions. I applaud your intentions, but you are not, you're not verbally articulate and you're having a, a lacking of the understanding of the Trinity, which he supports the Trinity, but he's saying when Jesus was on earth, he was the father. He was not the father. He was the son while he was on earth. That's why he prayed to the father. That's why a voice from heaven affirmed the son. Jesus wasn't being a ventriloquist and projecting his own voice into heaven to affirm himself. Okay, Jesus wasn't um, doing tricks. To, the Holy Spirit descended and lighted on Jesus as of a dove. Okay, <sighs> mince meat. But does Jesus Until say that because of what? Able to get us to the Father. Did Jesus say because of what I have done, you can get to the Father through me? Yeah. Where yeah. does it say that? Hmm. Through what he through his Christ through him being the sacrificial lamb. Does he say because this is pretty clear evidence that Jesse Lee Peterson has not come to God through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Very clear evidence. 
Okay. This man is not a brother. He, he has not been born again. He uses Christianese slogans and phrases and popular conservative pundit rhetoric to walk around as a Jim Jones among, you know, Orthodox Christians. There's, there shouldn't be any person who affirms this man as a, as a pastor. What I have done, you can get through the Father through me. <laughs> he says the only way to the Father is through me. Right, but did he say that because of what I have done, you can get through the Father through me? Well, mm. okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't recollect. I don't see it that way. I don't. I don't guess. I'm not understanding. He okay. never said that. So then, why do you say it? He never said it. And why do you believe it? He never said it. He He's got him convinced that that word, the what words that are written, are not written now. It sounds like the man is a pretty aged man, uh, but Jesse Lee Peterson is too. He's seventy. Seven, I think he's seventy three now. Seventy three. Seventy four. He hasn't. He's had a lot of health issues. And it's far too late in life for this man to keep this foolishness up. I hope that, you know, I, I hope and pray that he gets saved. But at this m present moment, he bears no fruit of salvation. Never told you to believe in him. And he never told you because of what I have done, you can get to the Father. Why do you say it and believe it? Well, I think that he has said it. I think that he has, he did come. He did come. He did come, and and but he was, never said to uh, believe in me. Mm. <laughs> mm. But it does say to believe in God. But for some reason, yeah. you haven't chosen to believe in Jesus and not God. So he's saying that faith in Christ is is not believing in God. So he's he's. He would be questioning this man's salvation and this man's uh, eternal life. I don't think, like I say, you know, you're not saved by how much you know or what you know, but who you know. This man may not be articulate who's coming to Jesse, but he surely seems to know the right information and know the right person who's going to take him to eternal life. Well, I believe in God. And no, I, you believe in Jesus. Well, I believe, I guess, my beliefs are he's three and one as a trinity. And where you get that so, from? So my okay, see, he didn't stay up on, on topic, on point. I think he was trying to argue the authority and sufficiency of Scripture. But Jesse, Je, none of Jesse's... Uh, tactics are they're not they're none of them are scripturally based actually he just contra he's really simple he contradicts what the word of god says you know he contradicts what he picks out what he views you talking about and just contradicts scripture just like satan hath god really said eve says it uh, and it's wrong <laughs> she's wrong in what god has said and then there's then the serpent says Con just flat out contradicts what God has says and then says God's keeping something good from you because he wants you to, you know, he knows that when you eat of the fruit, you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. This man claims to know good and evil and he claims to do good works, but he doesn't give people gospel that leads to salvation. This is a wicked deceiver. My, my belief. Why do you is, believe that he's three in one? Because. Jesus was there from the beginning. I know, but why in do you the, believe he's three in one? Word. He never said he was three in one. Yeah, basically he did because... Did he say uh, I'm three in one? He, you're talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Did Jesus in say I'm three with, in one? For the, any of his followers who happen to stumble across this video, normally they don't listen very well at all. But if you've come to this point, I've done videos, they're on both of my YouTube channels, Love Agenda and Men of Destiny, about clearly unrefutable scripture that 
say that Jesus is God and that there is a co-equality among the members of the Godhead, okay? To reject this just because the word Trinity is not in the Bible is at your own detriment and the danger of your own salvation. Don't li risk your soul for this man's foolishness. He didn't use them words. So why are you using them? But but he's not three and one. He's one of the three. Right. So why you say he's three and one? Well, God is three and one. What? Yeah. What? God is the the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So there, you know, he he denies the authority of Scripture, and in this video, this is only, this is only a nine minute video. So he denies the deity of Jesus Christ. Uh, he denies the sufficiency of the atonement of Jesus Christ. Right? No. Yes. No. Where is that? Let's go back. In the Holy Spirit. Did Jesus in say I'm three with, in one? He didn't use them words. So why are you using them? But but he's not three in one. He's one of the three. Right. So why are you say he's three in one? Well, God is three in one. What? Yeah. What? God is the, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, right? No. Yes. No. Where is that? Where did God say, I'm the Father, I'm the Son, and I'm the Holy Spirit? Where do you get that from? He's three in one. Where did well, God? Where in the Bible did God say, "I'm the I'm God, I'm the Son, I'm the Holy Spirit, I'm three and one"? Where do you get that from? Well, he said, "In the beginning was the Word." But where do you get that from? When he said and he the was word three was and God, one, and the Word was God. So he's putting it all together right there. But let me do this opinion. because it's not Bible thought for Thursday. But let me just say this to you: you okay. you sup. In order to return to the Father, you have to believe the truth, the word, the truth that the Son brought to you from the Father. And he that believed the truth shall return to the Father because of what the Son brought. And as we... Okay, because of what the Son brought. So he rejects the message of the cross. He rejects the message of the cross as the gospel as the means of salvation, the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's not because of what Jesus Christ did. It's because of information that Jesus Christ brought. So of the sacrifice the son made, there is, we have been forgiven for sin. So we're not guilty anymore of sin because our sins have been forgiven. And once you believe the word, the truth that come through the son about the father, and the way back to him, then you'll be free. You'll believe in the Father, not the Son, but the Father. And then greater works shall you do. So he mentioned the cross, but it the work of the cross, what was accomplished on the cross, is foolishness to Jesse. It's Let's keep going here. As the Son is doing, because you believe back into the Father. Amen. <laughs> he said amen to that. He said amen to that. And basically, it's it's about salvation that's coming through what Jesus said rather than what Jesus did and faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, although he even did mention uh, the, the sacrifice. Let's listen to it again. I think we'll go back far enough. We're given for sin, so we're not guilty anymore of sin because our sins have been forgiven. He talks about forgiveness. Okay, let's go back a little further than that. Truth that the Son brought to you from the Father, and he that believed the truth shall return to the Father. Okay, not because your sins were forgiven, not because you recognize that you are an enemy of God and your sins have separated you and alienated you from God, and that Christ died to pay for your sins. This is this is not a this is not a biblical gospel. It's basically an inform. Uh, it's an inf informative gospel. If you have the right information, you can be saved. Not if you believe the believe in the finished work of Christ. Because of what the Son brought. And as a result of With the sacrifice the Son made, there is, we have been forgiven for sin. 
So we're not guilty anymore of sin because our sins have been forgiven. And once you believe the word, the truth that comes through the son about the father and the way back to him, then you'll be free. and You'll believe in the father, not the son. Okay, so you'll deny the son. You believe whatever, whatever. Then you, then you are capable of denying the son. See what it says? He who denies the son has neither the father or the son. But the father, and then greater works shall you do as the son is doing because you believe back into the father. Oh, because you're recon recon reconciled, you got a direct line with the father and you can be like Jesus. This almost sounds like a little God's doctrine contortion. You, you can be just like Jesus, Jesus Jr., Jesus 2.0. Whew. Amen. And he said amen to that. <laughs> what the? Okay. <laughs> I thank you, Jesse. Thank you for what you're doing. That makes God sense. You. He, he's not a good, no, see, he this man needs to trust his spiritual and biblical instinct. This man is a messenger from hell. That makes sense. Yes, he did. Okay. Yes, he did. All right. Yes. And I'll be calling again because I, I sit here and get all, all, uh, all worked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call him then again. All right, Don. All right, buddy. Thank okay. you. Bye. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. Let's get There's, into. Is the line open now? John, it's a first time. Call. Let's get into the Word of God. We're just mainly focusing on believing in the Son. This man was so close to the right place, and yet he missed it. John chapter 14 says, <clears throat> Let your hearts not be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. You don't just get to the Father and then reject the Son or discard the Son. You have to believe in the Son. And it's there's virtually no... If you, when you believe in the Son, when you put your faith in Him, you're believing God because He was the promise from Genesis chapter 3. He was the promised seed that would crush the head of Satan and Satan would bruise his heel. This is the promise of redemption. This is the Messiah. And this is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. As it is written in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <clears throat> let your hearts, uh, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that. I would have told you that. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself. Take you to myself. He will be the one who comes and takes us to himself. That there. I, where I am, you may also be, and you know the way to where I'm going. And this is what, this is how near this man was to the truth. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. Here's another statement. Here's another scripture which staunchly uh, refutes that Jesse Lee Peterson is a Christian. If he knew the son, he would know the father also. The Holy Spirit would also reveal to him the truth of the triune nature of God. And he says, from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Because in Jesus is, is the full measure of the Godhead bodily. And he is the exact representation of of the father amen okay and on the message of uh, you know or to refute jesse's claim that you're, you're not to believe i'm i almost well i could do it i could do it this is it's <laughs> it's 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 wolver, wolvery foolery but it's to be expected from Jesse Lee Peterson, but it's a grave blasphemy of the truth. 
John 3.16, so popular. This, this man didn't grab a hold of the fact that Jesus said, you believe in God, good, believe also in me. We are to believe in the Son. And the two are inextricably connected together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his world or, or his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. We are only saved through him and we're only served, saved through believing in him. Whoever believes in him, look what it says here. Whoever believes in Jesus is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already. This is another thing that states that Jesse Lee Peterson is not saved. He is not redeemed. He rejects believing in Christ. Christ is a lesser being to God the Father. He rejects the divinity of Jesus Christ because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. That's evidence right there. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light. That's why he spends so much time so far from Scripture and so far from Christ, because he hates Jesus. He hates speaking about Jesus. He hates people who make much of the cross of Jesus Christ, because it takes away from him takes away from his glory it takes away from his he's the one who says he's sinlessly perfect and hasn't sinned in 30 years for everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come into the light lest his work should be exposed but whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God Praise the Lord Jesus. Look, y'all, just another case of an individual who meant well. And for that matter, he he did the right thing in trying to reach this man. Because if this man cared anything about the truth, he was confronted with enough truth to have repented or even considered his ignorance and his lack of knowledge. He has no desire to repent. Jesse Lee Peterson bears all of the fruit of a reprobate man with a reprobate mind. Don't forget to hit the like button on your way out. Don't forget, if this is your first time being here, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I hope you posted a comment of any other scriptures. There's, there's just two. I don't need 50 scriptures. It only takes one, one word in the word of God that contradicts this foolery and other fooleries. And it makes what they're saying a lie. Grace, peace, and love in Jesus' name. Until next time. Amen.